Let's use conditionals to design some more complex animations. Previously, we had designed an animation called Place Rocket. This is an animation of a rocket just flying up. And the way this animation works is that our function Place Rocket has this signature. It takes a number as input and produces an image. When we take numbers starting at zero and increasing and feed those numbers successively to Place Rocket, Place Rocket gives us back a sequence of images which the animate operation shows to us one after other after other. And that's how we build this animation. This time, we're going to build an animation that's a little different. We're going to have a rocket start on the ground and stay there for a few seconds and then start flying up. In order to build this animation, we have to think about what numbers should become what images. There are really two kinds of numbers, two kinds of frame numbers in this film. When the number is less than 100, that's the first part of the film. And in that part of the film, the rocket stays on the ground. In the second part of the film, once the number reaches 100 and beyond, the rocket starts flying. So one way to think about this problem is to say, well, the number that place rocket takes as input is not just any number there's more structure to this number. So let's write a data definition that exposes the structure of this number that's an input to place rocket, the frame number that structures the movie. Let's give this number a different kind of name for a data definition, let's call it time. And let's say what time is. Again, we're saying a time, well, is a number, but it's not just a number. There's more information that we can provide. So let's say that there are actually two kinds of time. The first kind of time is a number that's less than, let's say, 100. Again, 100 is a frame number at which the rocket starts flying. That's uh, a, a few seconds after frame zero. A second kind of number, a second kind of time, is a number that is at least 100. So there are two kinds of time, both of which are numbers, but we really want to handle these two different kinds of numbers differently. And that's why we write this data definition that exposes that a time is one of two cases. Okay, so that's our data definition. Let's write the signature purpose header of our new function. Uh, I'm going to rename this function. So instead of place rocket, I'm going to call it launch rocket. Again, it takes a time as input, which we had just defined. And maybe we need to say a little bit more about how the purpose of launch rocket, the new purpose, is different from the old purpose of place rocket. Okay. So um, make the rocket stay on the ground, then fly up. That's the purpose of our new function. And let's write the header. We're still going to call the input t for time, but now the name of the function is launch rocket. The examples for this new function are interesting. Think of these examples as pictures of what different frames of the movie might look like. And as we have already discussed, there are really two parts of the movie, so there are two kinds of frames. There's the kind of frame before the rocket launches, and there's the kind of frame after the rocket launches. So let's make sure that we have plenty of examples for both kinds of frames. In the first part of the movie, like for example, for frame zero, which is the very beginning of the movie, the rocket is just on the ground. And we have already actually have um, figured out how to make the picture of a, a rocket on the ground. Okay, so we take the rocket sprite and we put it at 100, which is uh, um, the middle of the screen horizontally, and 185, which is 
quite near the bottom uh, of the scene, and we put that on top of the background. Okay, we did that before. Okay, uh, what's new is that the rocket now has to stay there for a while. So, for example, at frame 50, we get the same picture. Okay. In fact, even when the rocket gets to, even when the time gets to 100, the rocket is still at the ground, still the same picture. These are the same pictures. The rocket starts flying at frame 100. So what used to be at time 100, when we're just starting the rocket flying right away, is now the result of launch rocket at 200 because it spends 100 frames on the ground and another 100 frames flying. Okay, so now we have two kinds of examples. The first kind of example, these two examples are for the first kind of number, which is before the rocket launches. And the second group of examples, these two examples, are for the second kind of time. This is when uh, the rocket has actually left the ground, has actually launched. Okay. So those are the examples. Now, um, let's take a look at how to write the template. So to save some room, I'm going to uh, omit these names of design recipe steps from before. Okay, so what's a template? Well, a starting point for the template is the header. So let's copy that. Now, so far, we've only had the kind of template where we just remind ourselves that the input or inputs is there, we should use T. But now we have a data definition with more structure. The data definition reminds us that our input T has two possible kinds. So the template for processing an input like T has to distinguish between the two different kinds because we might want to handle them differently. And for that, we have to use count. Because the data definition has two cases, our count is going to have two cases. And each case, like with all counts, is going to have a question and an answer. The question is going to be telling us whether we have this first kind of time or the second kind of time. So we could write a question like, is t less than 100? That will be the first kind of time. Or maybe t is at least 100. That's the second kind of time. We're not quite done with the template yet because we still have to fill in the answer a little bit. The answer in each case could be anything, but it probably needs to use the time, even after confirming that the time is one kind or the other. So the template should say, well, in each case, you might fill in some different formula that uses T. And that's the template for launch rocket. This is a bigger template than we have before. It is based on a data definition that has more structure than we've seen before. And this is going to help us design the function definition. Okay. So speaking of function definition, let's write this function. Well, let's start by copying the template, because that's a good starting point. One thing that will happen more and more in this class, so often the definition is going to be a result of weaving together the template and the examples. The one way to think of that is to fill in the template one case at a time. Let's fill in this case first and then this case. So when we fill in this first case, we first have to ask, what are the examples that go into that case? These are the two examples that go into this first case. So let's just focus on these two examples for now. Well, they all produce, they both produce the same result. After all, the rocket is just staying on the ground. So it's not moving, it's always gonna be the same image. So all we have to do is to copy the expected result from these examples and then paste them, paste the result into the template. Here, we actually ended up not using T, even though the template reminds us that we might want to use T. That's okay. Just for, from the fact that T is less than 100, we've actually gotten enough information to know exactly 
what the image should be. It should be the rocket on the ground, no matter what t is, as long as it's less than 100. So this is one case of the template that we filled in by referring to the examples that go into that case. Let's fill in the second case. Here's the second case for the template. We're going to fill that case in by referring to these examples, because those are the two examples that feed into, that go into the second case. Okay. So here, it helps a little to look at the formula that we came up with before for place rocket. In place rocket, we used place image, and for the y coordinate, we used 185 minus t, because 185 is the ground level, and as t increases from zero, the y coordinate of the rocket has to decrease in order to go up, because y in place image counts from top down. Now, launch rocket is only slightly different, because the rocket starts moving not at t0, but at t100. So to fill in this case of the template, we have to ask ourselves, how do we get 100t to become 185 and 200t to become 85? There's two ways to think about this. One way is to say what used to be t is now t minus 100. So that's one correct formula. Another formula to use, which is equivalent, is to say, well, we start at taking 100 to 185, and when t increases to 200, it, the result, the y coordinate should be 85. So what we actually are doing is to subtract from 285 the value of t. Both formulas will work. You can use the table method to come up with either formula. And now it comes time to test this function. In order to not confuse Dr. Racket, I'm going to put semicolons in front of each line of this uh, template, like that, so that Dr. Racket is going to run the definition. There's actually a faster way to do that. In Dr. Racket, if I select what I want to comment out, what I want to put semicolons in front of, if I go to the Racket menu and choose Comment Out with Semicolons, it's going to comment it out with semicolons. Okay, when I run this program, it's going to run the four tests that we've uh, written as part of step three of the design recipe. Another thing to try, of course, is to animate launch rocket. So it is stopping for a few seconds before moving up. By the way, this template has a count that's one of those counts where the last question could be replaced by else if you like. Because after all, any number that's not less than 100 is going to be greater than or equal to 100. So we could shorten our template and also shorten our definition by replacing the second question with else. We don't have to. Um, I think it's actually clear in this case to just keep the two questions in, but you could if you want.